Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Ambassador Vix, and I am back with another awesome video on this channel. We we'll talk about the positivity about Ghana and Africa. This content is one of the best content that I've ever come across on the media. Couples from America who have been living in Ghana for close to two years granted an interview with a fellow content creator that is epic it was. And those um, couples were able to share their experiences in America, experiences in Ghana, just opposing the lifestyles in these two countries and also making some daring statements about Ghana and America to the fact that America is not a perfect country that people think it is. So therefore, those who are wanting to move to America and those who are wanting to move to Africa should take note that indeed there are more opportunities in Africa than in America. This is the video that I'm going to share with you. And on Vicemen TV, we are wanting to give publicity to such kind of videos so that the brainwashing that the Western media has given to you and I, you will try as much as possible to learn and relearn to see positivity in Africa and any other African countries. Once again, my name is Ambassador Vix. Enjoy the episode and let me know what you think. Some people are waiting till they retire. So how are you going to do all the things we're doing here when you're 70? Wow. You're 70. Now you're coming to start and do this physical work and stuff. It's not going to work. I'm way stronger. I couldn't walk up this hill. That's why we put the ramps and stuff. I couldn't just walk up this steep hill like this when we first came. My knee and everything. But now I'm stronger. Now I'm more fit. Now I, you know, I'm eating better. So I'm able to do that. But if I waited for them to suck the life out of me until I'm 70 to come, no way. I, I wish and we advise people, if you can do it sooner, come sooner young people watching right now um, what what kind of advice would you like to give out there because a lot of people feel like you need to be you know retired before coming to africa but right now we are in ghana for me i would like to tell the young people the opportunity is vast wow. anything you see that is um challenging anything you see anybody complaining about mm -hmm. is opportunity for business right Customer service. Customer service is lacking. Okay. Um, people who say they're coming at 7 o'clock in the morning might not show up till next week. You know, so, so if any business you have, if you implement the things that you have learned in the West, being on time, being a person of your word, right? Doing the job truthfully and honestly and right. I mean, there's digital content creation is people need to advertise, right? So all these different social media mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. but like Instagram, I think mm -hmm. is big here. And who, what young person doesn't know how to do that? Go to companies, businesses. I mean, there's just a vast amount of things that as a young person they can do. Oh. I think they should come and visit. They should come and visit. First and foremost, come and visit. visit. Come and visit. See how things are. Look for yourself. Like, could I make it? Do you want to work for somebody? If you're young, you know, and especially if you don't have a family, it's just you, you can come here and check it out. Try to get something together. I mean, that that is my advice. I really, really wish that I knew why young people don't come here. You can't get the business opportunities there that you can get here. The culture shock, mainly here, like peeing on the side of the road or something like that. I'm not used to seeing that. I'm used to it now. We've been here almost two years. And the trash, like the, they throw trash everywhere. In U.S., you will get a fine if they catch you. But I don't know, it just seems like they don't care or something here. They don't think about it. Okay. Um, when you get somebody coming here to work, you give them sachet water, the bag it ends up in the ground. Like, who's going to pick that up? Mm. But they don't mean anything bad by it. But to me, over there, when you do that, that's very disrespectful. 
So when I did it, it, it like takes a change of mindset to realize that, no, they don't mean anything. People sweep here every morning. Mm -hmm. People sweep the place up. So it's not a big thing. Just throw it on the floor mm -hmm. and somebody's coming to sweep it. So that was another uh, kind of, I guess you would say, culture shock. We're working, right? Mm -hmm. But it's on our time. Mm -hmm. wow. But there... Being your own boss. Yeah, like I told mm -hmm. you, two o'clock, and always my wife says, he said, two o'clock will come quick when we were in the United <laughs> States. When, when I'm watching TV around 7.30, he said, two o'clock will come quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it will come quick. Mm -hmm. I don't have a choice but to get up and go to work. Mm -hmm. And when I get home, I have to go to my normal job. And then when you get to your normal job, like seven o'clock, your break is nine o'clock, 15 minutes. 15 minutes break. That's what we got. Lunch is 45 minutes. Some people get 30 minutes. Okay. And then 3 o'clock, you get 15 minutes again. So 15 minutes. So before you will walk from your workplace to, uh, 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 what do they call the it? Room. The break room. You already spent 3 minutes. Mm. So you can go to the break room <clears throat> 15 minutes and spend 25 minutes there. You might get by the first time, but the second time and third time, they might write you up. When I, when I was there, I used to watch, you know, uh, what we call um, American TV, and now I'm in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I have to watch Ghanaian. Okay. Because this is Ghana, this is North America. Okay. The laws are different. Mm -hmm. So some people get there and they are short, you know, and they don't want to learn. Some people too don't want to learn because when you go there, you have to study how the people live life. Wow. So there are certain things that you have to know. And sometimes when you get there, let people help you. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that we helping people who come from diaspora. Mm -hmm. A lot of people um, think that, you know, they can just get their passport and mm -hmm. come to Ghana mm -hmm. and just live in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But there's rules. There are rules. Mm -hmm. When you, get to, you go to United States, you have to get your resident permits and everything. And I, here too is the same. Mm -hmm. You cannot come and just live here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there is rules. Mm -hmm. But most of the people think that they have an American passport so they can just come and just stay here. And they don't know. They don't know because they think uh, in America, America is superior. Mm -hmm. So they think, every, some of them think that they can come and stay. They have rules and regulations. regulations. Yeah. You have to get your resident permit mm -hmm. and they have to take some uh, this thing, a year before you can be a citizen. But what are some of the things that you think as American coming to Africa, being specific, we are in Ghana. What are some of the things that you think they shouldn't bring along? Leave your guns there. Leave your fighting there. <laughs> leave all of that behind. Mm -hmm. And come and have a, enjoy a peaceful, free life. The Western media never told you about all these kind of things. Never. But what makes you really confident to say all what you're saying? Well, number one, I've been here for almost two years. Okay. Number two, in the States... I was surrounded by Africans. So the first church we were in was a Ghanaian church. Okay. And we are still close with them. We love them. That's our church family. The church right before we came here, African church, French-speaking church, as a matter of fact, okay. all different kinds of people. When we worked, at, it was called Kmart Distribution. I would ask people about the culture. When we worked at Polo, we worked together at another company. And there were people from, um, was it Sudan? Uh -huh. The Sudanese. The ladies used to always bring food. Mm -hmm. Embrace a culture. You know, don't just think that Africa is this or that. Embrace the culture. I think you should learn a lot about it. And I think that, you know, coming here, leave the West behind. Leave it behind. The, the people that I was around have enriched my life a lot. 
I've learned many things, many, many things I've learned from them. I've learned the family, mm -hmm. how the Ghanaians, when they meet together, they are close like family. Mm -hmm. The African church we were at, they were close like family, like blood. You know, they help each other and everything. The vegetables have all the, you know, they they import stuff and mm -hmm. it stays on the shelf for so long. You come and buy it. It will stay good in your fridge for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when I grow it here, I feel very happy. I feel healthy. You know, and when I see what the animals eat, and the animals themselves bring you some stress relief, some mm -hmm. joy, right? So you're getting that while they're alive. So it's helping your mentality um, to be strong, you know, yeah. wise and health-wise as well? Yes, 100%. What one question that you wish I should have asked you, but I did not ask you? Okay, maybe how does it feel to help somebody else move here and settle in and see them flourish? So how is it for you? It's amazing. I love it. It absolutely makes me very, very joyful and happy. Is it easy to build in Ghana? Okay. You know, if you are in the United States or something like that, then I'll tell you that it's not easy to build here, but you can make it. You can, you know, whatever you have, come and buy a land for yourself. You know, when you buy a land, you can go from there and make sure that um, the person that is buying the land is um, doing the right thing, like, you know, doing the due diligence and all those kind of things for you. You see, Kimberly, together with her husband, shared, objectively shared their experiences in Africa and also um, in the Western world. I like the fact that they were able to tell those living in the Western world and who are wanting to come back that you need to make your best of research. Just as you need papers, resident permits for you to stay in America, it's the same way that countries within Africa are also demanding you to do. You can't just come and stay in Ghana and just go, okay? I understand that the Western media has been watched as to believe that countries within Africa are not the best of the countries. But as she just said, or as they said, each and every continent, each and every country has their challenges and opportunities. And anytime that you sense challenges in a particular place, it tells you that there are opportunities. Most of us don't know that thing. Anytime that you sense or you're able to um, sense challenges, it serves as an opportunity for you. So she made mention of customer service problems in Ghana and any other African countries. It really tells you that if you're a customer service specialist, you need not to be even a customer service specialist. The little knowledge and skill you know about customer service, you can't be able to do um, um, immensely well within the continent of you know, um, um, Africa. I also like the fact that she was able to say that when you're moving from America to a place like Ghana, you, know, you don't need your guns. Those rifles and shotguns and all that, you don't need them because Ghana is one of the peaceful countries in the world, not in Africa, one of the peaceful countries in the world. Just as I said, I have not come across a video where people were, sh were sharing negative stuff about Ghana. So that really tells you that people feel free anytime that you know, they visit Ghana. I know that Africa or countries within Africa, especially Ghana, face some sort of problems. And those kind of problems are leadership problems. All right. But just as you are wanting to enjoy the same lifestyle as you enjoyed in the Western world, it's something that they were trying to say that it is a mistake that you are committing. You should find a reason to visit your roots. You should find a reason to come back. But don't come back with the expectation that you're going to live the same lifestyle that you were once living in the US. And that is going to be a challenge for you. Before you come, just educate yourself about the place that you are coming, the rules and regulations, so that majority of the thing that you experience wouldn't be a culture shock to you. They also share the advice to the extent that they, they were telling the people living in the state that don't wait till you become, you know, an old person, 45 and about, before you move into the country. If you find the need to come into the country, even at the age of 20 and 30, you need to come. But before you come, just make sure you are prepared because in Africa or in places like Ghana, things move slow. I am not going to lie to you. Things move slow in here. 
certain processes that you are supposed to, you know, certain processes that is supposed to take you a day or two. In Ghana, it's going to take you maybe three months or two weeks. So it's something that it is there. So you need to come and embrace and make sure that you are going to contribute to making that change happen. It said that educate yourself and be ready for change. And out of the change of which you are going to gain your freedom. I know that you enjoyed this whole episode and you've learned something about Kimberly and the husband upon them moving from the US to Ghana. If there's something of which you think you don't agree with them, let me know at the comment. But let me know what you think also about the video and what they shared. Once again, my name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time in another episode. Sokoto, Mayande. Thank <laughs> you.